Today, Senate Republicans blocked the president's nominee to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The watchdog agency is charged with enforcing financial regulation and protecting consumer rights. Democrats say the move is unprecedented and could hamper efforts to rein in the corporations and policies that cause the economic crisis. FSRN's Matt Laszlo reports from Washington. This is the second time Republicans have blocked the nominee to head the Consumer Bureau. And Democrats in the White House say it's a major blow to average American citizens. New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer says the Bureau represents a major step forward for the U.S. Now, for the first time in history of our nation, we have an agency that has an explicit mandate to protect middle class consumers. And unbelievably, this Congress is battling efforts uh, to set that agency up. The head of the Consumer Bureau has special powers including regulation of payday lenders and other non-banks that make financial transactions, such as mortgages. But without a confirmed nominee, the agency hasn't been able to use these powers. Schumer says the GOP filibuster is an attempt to dismantle an agency they opposed from the beginning. Some of my colleagues seem to fancy themselves as heroes in the Greek myth, believing they're on a mission to end this agency by cutting off its head. It's time to end the fantasy. The Bureau is popular with the American people. We're simply not going to allow it to be dismantled. The nominee who was defeated is Ohio Attorney General Richard Cordray. Besides consumer groups, a bipartisan group of 37 attorneys general from across the U.S. endorsed him, including eight Republicans. Ohio Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown has served with Cordray in varying capacities in Ohio and says he's popular, ethical, and the right person for the job. He has the support of Ohio's banks, Ohio's um, uh, credit unions, a a large number of CEOs and other consumer groups. He's clearly qualified for this job. Democrats say Cordray was defeated purely for partisan reasons. Senate Banking Committee Chair Tim Johnson says partisanship has clouded the legislative process once again. We're not here today due to any Republican concerns about Mr. Cordray's qualifications, his politics, or his character. And for their part, the GOP readily admits the debate isn't about Cordray at all. Here's the top Republican on the banking committee in the Senate, Richard Shelby of Alabama. But this is not about him. It's about the structure of this, a powerful, I think, a monster as far as uh, future regulation to overregulate our economy, create more regulations and fewer jobs. This year, 45 Republican senators sent the president a letter demanding three changes to the bureau. They want a council set up instead of just one head secretary. They also want it to be funded through Congress and not the Federal Reserve so that lawmakers have more oversight. And they want the agency to take into account the safety and soundness of institutions, which Democrats say means the profitability of banks. Republicans like Indiana Senator Richard Lugar deny the charge. I stand with my colleagues on this issue because clearly this is a case of tremendous overregulation without any control by the Congress. But some, including Rhode Island Democratic Senator Jack Reed, say the GOP stance is nonsensical. It's sort of like saying, sorry, you can't have a commissioner of the FDA until you repeal all the food, drug, and safety laws in the country. It's not only Republicans who derailed the nomination, says Chair Johnson. He says Wall Street had a hand. This misleading claim jumped up by special interest and put forth by a vocal minority should be exposed for what it is and attempted to destroy the Bureau's ability to do its job. Now consumer groups and many Democrats say it's up to the president to appoint Cordray during the upcoming congressional recess. That won't infuriate Republicans, but many observers say there's no other option. Matt Laszlo, FSRN, Washington.